Hello, boys and girls from Pisa, Italy. This is uh, Nathan Smith, Nathan Smith Photography. Just did the uh, 2.0 and 3.0 updates on the X Pro 2 and on the XT2 yesterday. And there's a few changes, and I wanted to just quickly go over two things that actually apply to both cameras. One is the, um, personally, I use auto ISO. Um, I've used it since the days of the X-T1, and it was a little bit frustrating because there was only one setting. Uh, the problem is uh, being able to change the settings quickly. So what I now do is function button number five, which is your right directional button. I have this set, so if I press this, I have my three different um, auto ISO settings. And so I have what I would call day, dusk, and evening. So bright light, uh, kind of, you know, low light, but not super low, and then just like really dark, low light settings. So the cool thing about this, the way this works, if you're at a wedding or an event or you want to change things quickly, you just push the right button, go up or down, and either hit OK or just tap your shutter button and you're ready to go. So this is really fast to change your Otis ISO settings. The cool thing is if you want to change what they are, you just hit the right button again and you're right into the settings where you can change, you know, make them the way you, the way that you want them. Um, the other thing that, and this kind of started, in fact, let me bring up the uh, X Pro 2 here. Um, as you can see, I do the same thing on the X Pro 2, right button, and I can change my auto ISO settings. Makes it very useful, especially since the uh, X Pro 2 doesn't have the most user friendly um, ISO changing button. One hint if you do want to use this to change the ISO, do it looking through the viewfinder. It's actually very fast and easy, and it's not upside down, etc. etc. The other thing I do on all of my cameras is my X-T1, my X-T2, my X-Pro2. This button here, which is function button number two, I make that the um, depth of field preview button, kind of like I used to have on my Nikons. And the beautiful thing about the Fuji system is if you're at F8 or 11 or 16, you can actually see <laughs> what's in focus instead of being greeted with a very dark viewfinder. So this on all my cameras is uh, depth of field preview, right directional button on the X Pro 2 and X T2 is auto ISO. And the other thing that changed, especially on the X Pro 2, is if you hit the drive button and you went down to bracketing, um, it used to, you can see there it says AE bracket, you used to be able to change the bracket settings and that went away because now you can do three, five, or so shots etc so there's a lot more to change so they couldn't put that in this menu well what I've done on both my X Pro 2 and XT2 is I've made it so that this top button allows me to quickly get right into the menu to change my bracket settings so if I want to uh, change this to you know five um, you know five frames or seven frames or whatever it is I can do that quickly in the menu now the cool thing about this I always want this button on the XT1 I really like the fact that it does the wireless transfer well the cool thing is this button can be dual function so on both my XT2 and X Pro 2 if I push this this changes the bracketing but if I hit the play button on an image then if you hit the function button it does the wireless transfer so the button can work for both both things hope you find this helpful uh, if you like this video please like it feel free to subscribe also if you use a wacom tablet do check out my video on how to set it up for both photoshop and lightroom it has over seventy-five thousand views um, a lot of people don't know that you the buttons on the tablet will actually change function with the application that you're using. So when you switch from Lightroom to Photoshop, the buttons can do different things. Thanks for listening. Bye.